Senior brother Chu Zihang, be quiet and keep your heart hidden. How much regret do you need to rest on to have a good night's sleep? Principal anger, how heavy is the hatred that has burdened you for a lifetime? Can giving you a big hug slightly dilute your sadness? What about you, Hua Li Yi? The story says you are a witch-like girl, you must be very beautiful, the kind that can make me addicted to you. I really want to see you. A cycle of nightmares about the future made Lu Mingfei cry all night, holding the blanket in his hands. Sad tears seem to drown the world. There are three thousand swords in the world, but regret is the most deadly. The more brave tears than the rainstorm finally poured through Lu Mingfei's stagnant life and his cowardice hidden in his bones. Kendo, knowledge, strength. Boys will firmly grasp everything. The door of castle opened wide, and the train of fate sounded its horn and headed towards the other side. This time, the young dragon slayer was determined to raise his sword to protect his girl, cut off all regrets, and fight in all directions. P.S. The Most Responsible Man, Lu Mingfei Keywords of the Novel Lu Mingfei, who studied the dragon clan before dragon slaying, has no pop-ups. Download the complete text of Lu Mingfei, who studied the dragon clan before dragon slaying, and read the latest chapters of Lu Mingfei, who studied the dragon clan before dragon slaying. Chapter 1 Painting Pair Clothes, Wait for Me you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Painting Pair Clothes, Wait for Me. Chen Mo Tong, A Good Wife, A Bad Woman. Chen Wen Wen, A Little Tea, Stupid Woman. Chu Zihang, Good Senior Brother, Ba Pugui. Lu Mingzi, Little Devil, Foolish Ududu. Herzog, Dead. The amber colored morning light slanted through the glass window onto the desk. As the boy wrote this, he couldn't help but take a deep breath and stare at the black hardcover notebook in front of him. Then, he seemed to muster all his strength to write this sentence on the last line. Yusuji painted pair clothes, beloved. Lu Mingfei stared at the last line of words for a long time, as if the girl he had never seen, which he had been longing for, was hidden in the book and leaped onto the paper. The boy carefully examined her with his chin held up, his eyes filled with tenderness at the corners of his mouth. For years, this has been something that Lu Mingfei has been tirelessly doing every day, as if writing down those contents with his own hands day after day is not enough. The boy seems to want to deeply engrave the last name in his own bone marrow. Lu Mingfei, did you forget that a professor from an American school is coming for an interview today? Are you going to college on your own and not worrying about yourself? Why don't you quickly get dressed and prepare to go out? Oh. Auntie's urging sounded incessantly outside the door, but the boy beside the desk did not mutter such vulgar words as, the emperor is not in a hurry, what's the hurry? He just replied calmly without getting angry. He gently closed his notebook, as if afraid of accidentally crushing the precious name in the book. It's not Auntie's rambling, there have been too many cases of cheating on prestigious universities recently, let alone Castle College. I've never heard of this before. Yesterday, I asked your uncle to check the information on the school's official website. Guess what? After clicking on it, there are all kinds of junk ads like, sexy dealer, online licensing, come and chop me if you're a brother. Dot. This should have nothing to do with their school, it's probably because uncle's computer has a virus, Lu Mingfei replied helplessly. Normally, besides uncle himself, there is only his cousin Lu Mingzi who uses his uncle's HP laptop that has almost been phased out. However, every time Lu Mingzi uses the computer, he hides alone in his room and locks the door, claiming that he doesn't want to be disturbed and focuses solely on his studies. However, as soon as Kaluming opened the browsing history afterwards, there were all some strange VPNs, so it is self.evident how this computer virus came about. In short, don't just say whatever others ask you, and shake off all the information at home to outsiders. You should know that Chinese people can't believe everything they say without deceiving Chinese people. Those fake professors from foreign countries are also cunning. If you don't pay attention, be careful not to be deceived by others and have no underwear to wear. 
even if you don't have many underwear. Once Auntie starts nagging, she doesn't know when she will stop. This is something that the whole family can't help but take for granted. However, Lu Mingfei still couldn't help but think. If one day the physics world breaks through the barrier of intelligence and develops the first perpetual motion machine, it will probably be Auntie's mouth. Mingfei, are you listening? Mingfei. I'm listening. In fact, Lu Mingfei was not listening at all because he knew that Castle College really existed. On a certain day when Lu Mingfei first entered high school, he would repeat a dream every night. In the dream, he would sit on a windowsill covered in green ivy and read a story called The Dragon Clan every day. Coincidentally, there was also a weakling named Lu Mingfei in the story. Not only Lu Mingfei, but there are also many characters in the book that have appeared in Lu Mingfei's life. Lu Mingze, Fat House Edition, Chen Wenwen, Chu Zihang. There are also many names he has never seen or heard of. Fenger, Caesar. Ely E. The whole story abruptly ends when he reads about the helpless death of the girl named Ely E. In fact, at the beginning, Lu Mingfei did not take the stories in his dreams as something extraordinary. After all, the existence of the four great kings and the eight families of Snake Chi sounds too mystical, and has nothing to do with the world he currently lives in. And the story of that lackey dog's decline looks like an autobiography written by an old thief with a rampant literary disease. Can you believe that? Just like one day on the way, you met a strange blind man who said, Hey, do you believe in light? I see that your bones are amazing and your talent is extraordinary. You will be a genius who will save the world from catastrophe in the future. As he said, he stuffed a divine light stick into your hand. How do you know if that divine light stick is a small gift that comes with buying Diga Ultraman's hand in the store? Do you really fantasize that one day there will be a Gatangel in the world, and then you will step on the miraculous BGM to become a giant of light and save the world? If Lu Mingfei had just entered junior high school, he would have thought that dragon slaying was such a cool and great career, and he had to step in. After all, what would happen if Lu Mingfei's rotation slowed down a bit without his S. class on this earth? Isn't that day already 25 hours long? Isn't it that the gravitational difference between the earth and the moon will increase, leading to tidal effects and global warming? Arctic glaciers will melt, and then tsunamis that cover up the sun will flood cities and ultimately lead to the end of the world. This is okay. K. Lu Mingfei was already a mature high school student at that time. Of course, he believed that Kanjo Chingtaro had a platinum heart, that Luffy's body could stretch and contract freely, and that Ureno Yosuke could also come back to life from death. K. Lu Mingfei was willing to believe and firmly believed that these must exist. It just won't happen in the world where Lu Mingfei is. Until Lu Mingfei accidentally met his senior brother, Chu Zihang, who existed in both dream and real world after school. On that rainy evening, Chu Zihang, who ranked first on the This Fong Should Be Punished list at Sherlon Middle School and was even more popular than the principal, refused everyone's companions. After all his classmates left school with umbrellas, he watched alone as the rain drenched the entire world in darkness. The sadness in his eyes was as strong as a mighty tide, as if it could engulf the world. Lu Mingfei was momentarily stunned because he didn't understand. Why did Chu Zihang, who had already lived like a star figure far away in his eyes, show a more helpless and lonely gaze than him, unless until Chu Zihang's figure was about to disappear on that rainy night, Lu Mingfei chased after him. Senior brother. Lu Mingfei. Yes, senior brother actually remembers me. Um, what's up? Is senior brother also alone after school, and where are your parents? Chu Zihang gave Lu Mingfei a strange glance. From his appearance to his grades and hobbies, many people cared about him every day, but no one ever asked him, why are you still alone after school, your parents? However, Chu Zihang was instantly relieved because the person asking this question was Lu Mingfei, the only guy in the school who leaves later than him every time it rains. They divorced, Chu Zihang said. 
I remember meeting my senior brother's father before. It was also a rainy day, and he was driving a very luxurious car. At that time, my senior brother even asked me if I wanted to get on the car together, Lu Mingfei said softly, staring into Chu Zihang's eyes. Um. There was a car accident on the elevated road that day, and my father went missing. I was the only one who walked out. Chu Zihang's eyes fell silent, as if hiding a mournful and indescribable eulogy, I still have saxophone classes to attend, be careful on the way home alone. Chu Zihang thought that Lu Mingfei was missing his parents, but he was not very good at comforting people, so he could only pat the other person's shoulder as a gesture of comfort. Until Chu Zihang left for a long time, Lu Mingfei remained in place for an unknown amount of time, as if he had been cast a immobilization spell. The stories in his dreams kept flashing back in his mind like fragments from an old movie. The heavy rain poured on him like piercing nails, piercing through his body and heart. Painting pair clothes, painting pair clothes, painting pair clothes. After realizing this, Lu Mingfei went crazy and ran home, muttering the name out of his mouth. He didn't even have time to take a shower and just wanted to fall asleep as soon as possible. But Lu Mingfei realized in despair that from the day when his dreams overlapped with reality, he had lost the ability to dream. How could it be? Why can't I dream anymore? Lightning breaks through the clouds and thunder resounds in all directions. Lu Mingfei seemed to have been struck by a heavy thunderbolt, completely losing his soul. Tears sneaked out of the boy's eyes without even a shout. He went from silent tears at the beginning, to low sobs, and then to crying loudly. Lu Mingfei cried all night. Outside the window is a rainstorm that seems to submerge the whole world, and inside is a boy crying with his quilt covered. The tears, which were more fierce than the rainstorm, finally poured through Lu Mingfei's stagnant life and wiped out his cowardice hidden in his bones. Just like someone holding a bloody bone picking knife and cutting open Lu Mingfei's skin and then opening up the heart inside, which was filled with childishness and despair, the person just took out his heart and handed it to Lu Mingfei for a glance, then sneered and silently stuffed the heart back in. The other party didn't say a word, but Lu Mingfei clearly heard disappointment and ridicule from the contemptuous laughter. He is now the one who is happy to be dissected, holding the knife is himself who was unable to save the girl, and the sharpest knife in the world is called regret and regret. Three thousand swords in the world, remorse is the most deadly. From that day on, Lu Mingfei had undergone a transformation. He gradually put down his mouse and keyboard, leaving Warcraft and interstellar space, turning around, he picked up a bamboo knife and a book, and wandered between the Kendo Museum and the library. From that day on, Lu Mingfei knew that there was indeed a place in the world called Castle Academy, which was a gathering place for neuroses and monsters, he also knew that there was a girl destined for him on the other side of Japan, waiting for him to save her. Lu Mingfei no longer dreams, but the story that appeared in his dreams has too many details and too complicated content. Therefore, Lu Mingfei has developed the habit of writing down some people and important things he will encounter in his notebook every day. He doesn't want to forget or dare not forget them. It's time to go out, Ming Fei. Auntie's call pulled Lu Mingfei back from his memories to reality. Lu Mingfei put on a suit borrowed from his uncle that was not expensive or even somewhat cheap, and combed his hair into the shape of an adult. The boy in the mirror looked quite reliable and steady. As he pushed open the door, the boy seemed to whisper to himself and to the distant shore thousands of miles away. It's not far, Ili E. With countless mountains and rivers, the days ahead are long. Please make sure to wait for me to find you. Definitely. Lu Mingfei, an ordinary young man living in a small coastal town in the south, had never even seen a helicopter or an express train with his own eyes when he was so old. However, Lu Mingfei had not been yearning or secretly feeling discouraged about such things since three years ago, because the young man had long known that his life was intertwined with thorny paths. He was destined to be extraordinary by birth. The new book sets sail with various demands, don't let the book die. You will see a completely different Lu Mingfei here, 
guarding the best painted pair clothes in the world, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Youth Story You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Youth Story at 9 o'clock in the morning, at the Lijing Hotel This five-dot-star hotel is one of the most luxurious hotels in this small coastal town in the south. Even the price of staying in the next-level executive suite for one night is at least four digits or higher. In the eyes of locals, its value is equivalent to Rolex for watches and Rolls-Royce for cars, making it a fighter jet in hotels. Being able to use this as an interview location is actually enough to prove the economic strength of Castle College. However, if we follow the style of a student president at Castle College, he may frown and sneer, saying, this is the most luxurious hotel in Chu Zihang's hometown. It's really disappointing. Have we arrived at the cave where the mountaintop cave people live? Then the student president is likely to wave his hand and not blink to buy the entire Lijing Hotel, and then a huge crowd of people will flock to the hotel until the arrogant nobleman is satisfied with the hotel. Most of the noblemen would smile and say, free all day, count on me. Then he would indulge in the cheers and applause of everyone. After imagining the scene with a strong sense of visuals, Lu Mingfei smiled and shook his head. The degree of absurdity of the student president he had never met before was definitely only a little more. Through the huge French window of the hotel, which was polished and polished, Lu Mingfei saw his reflection in the window. The originally broken bangs were smeared with a little moose hair glue and combed into back hair. His body was much stronger than that of the person who just went to high school three years ago. Although he was not yet tall, he was not weak and could not help being windy. The most important thing is still his temperament, even though he is wearing a knockoff Loro Piena high imitation suit that his uncle secretly bought from his friends with his aunt on his back. Now, Lu Mingfei doesn't seem to have the embarrassment of children stealing adult clothes. Are you the student who came to Castle College for interview? The waiter standing opposite the French window opened the front door for Lu Mingfei and asked with a smile. Mm, -mm I am. Lu Mingfei replied with a grin. So please let our responsible personnel take you to the administrative floor. The beautiful sister, wearing a black silk dress and 10 centimeter high heels, patiently guided Lu Mingfei and provided a smiling service throughout the journey. Lu Mingfei Sitting outside the executive floor conference hall on the eighth floor, Su Xiaoqiang waved high and cheered, as if showing off that she was the first person in the crowd to discover Lu Mingfei. Good morning, Su Xiaoqiang. Lu Mingfei responded with a smile. Su Xiaoqiang is the proudest and most provocative girl in the class, nicknamed Little Heavenly Girl, but she also has such a proud capital. It is said that Su Xiaoqiang's family is in the coal business. On her first day of school, she jumped off a Mercedes-Benz S. class wearing a DKNY that most of her classmates had never heard of before. The sunlight shone on her tall and fair neck, and the girl was as proud as a pure white swan. However, Lu Mingfei did not dislike Su Xiaoqiang, or in other words, there were hardly anyone in the class who disliked her. On the contrary, there were even many mischievous toads who dreamed of one day being able to kiss her, and willingly became fans of this white swan. However, Su Xiaoqiang's outgoing personality makes it easy for most boys in the class to become good buddies when they are around, and the naive feelings of high school boys actually start with a quiet girl, just like Shen Jai in those years. Chen Wenwen is widely recognized as Shen Jai in the class. She is synonymous with quietness and purity, and there are also many boys who believe they can become Ku Jingting's enthusiastic and courteous, both openly and secretly. However, Chen Wenwen is not a fan of her. Coincidentally, the only vacant seat among the 17 seats left for Lu Mingfei was Chen Wenwen on the right, and Zhao Menghua on the right. It goes without saying that Zhao Menghua is recognized by Shirlan Middle School as the only person who can be called the second of Chu Zihang. Zhao Menghua must occupy a spot, and he is also proud of it. But the other person who received this honor obviously didn't take this matter seriously, which also led to Zhao Menghua's particularly envious stance when meeting him. After all, 
it was destined to be inferior to Chu Zihang. If even the title of Chu Zihang II was given a share, wouldn't it be said that Zhao Menghua was not even as good as half of Chu Zihang? If it's a matter of family background, Zhao Menghua is confident that he can shake off the boy who can't even afford a decent suit, so that he can't see his taillights. However, what Shirlan Middle School lacks the most is a wealthy elite, but compared to that person in other aspects besides family background, Zhao Menghua does feel a bit intimidated. That guy didn't know which one of his tendons was wrong. Even before high school, he looked like a dead pig not afraid of boiling water. When he entered high school, he seemed to have contracted an infectious disease called Chu Zihang Syndrome. Not only did he go to the library whenever he had something to do, but his grades and cultural courses were like a monkey bound to a string, soaring like a monkey, every day, I stay in the youth palace in the city until it closes, almost bringing a set of bedding and settling down inside. So Zhao Menghua's spiritual level was completely destroyed by that person on 18 streets. That person is currently separated from Zhao Menghua by Chen Wenwen. Good morning, Lu Mingfei. Chen Wenwen's small voice was like a mosquito buzzing, and she didn't dare to turn her head to look directly at Lu Mingfei's face. Well, good morning. Lu Mingfei took the croissant and hot milk brought by the waiter without looking back. Chen Wenwen carefully scrutinized Lu Mingfei with the remaining light, whose face was hidden in the rising mist. The white milk swayed in Lu Mingfei's hands, creating swirling ripples. The boy stared at the white vortex in the cup as if thinking about something, and his attention was clearly not on her. It turned out that she wasn't as attractive as a cup of hot milk, and Chen Wenwen felt a bit lonely for no reason. She was the president of the literary society, and during her three years in office, countless boys sharpened their heads and wanted to squeeze into the society. However, as the president, she only invited two people from beginning to end, one was Zhao Menghua and the other was Lu Mingfei. However, the difference between the two people who are also known as the successors of Chu Zihang is that the former readily agrees, while the latter decisively refuses. Upon learning about this, Zhao Menghua suddenly felt a sense of humiliation as he bought clothes at a high price that even his mortal rivals looked down upon, and he was unaware of it. So Lu Mingfei naturally became the most piercing thorn in Zhao Menghua's eyes. The most helpless thing was that the reason given by Lu Mingfei when he refused Chen Wenwen left her stunned on the spot, without any refutation. Sorry, actually I prefer books with a stronger literary quality, such as The Shawshank Redemption or A Hundred Years of Solitude, and your literary society seems to prefer romantic reading materials like The Lover That Hurt Spring and Autumn. I'm not belittling which side is bad, it's just that having you is enough for sentimental people. There must be someone to shoulder the banner of literary and educational development, otherwise how can society progress and the country prosper? Are you right? Then Lu Mingfei left alone holding a thick copy of The Count of Monte Cristo, leaving Chen Wenwen and a group of members of the literary society puzzled for a moment whether he was serious or talking nonsense. The male members of the literary society are still secretly slandering Lu Mingfei. Is this guy really a normal male? Is it true that someone joined the literary society to explore philosophical knowledge and improve literary literacy, rather than to be able to appreciate Chen Wenwen from afar? Even a blind person should not refuse Chen Wenwen's beautiful, pure, and charming voice, should they? But that guy named Lu Mingfei not only refused, but also refused mercilessly, which can be described as inhumane. Since then, there has been a widely circulated saying in the class, this boy has no heart. This is the first time Chen Wenwen has tasted the taste of rejection. She thought to herself that this is the unique astringency of youth, but every time she sees that boy again, she can't help but feel a surge of sweetness in her heart. Most people are born unsatisfied, and the less they can get, the more they tend to care about it. If emotions can be controlled, the licking dog would have become an endangered species long ago. From this moment on, the boy who seemed to have no understanding of human relationships and worldly wisdom became a seed planted in Chen Wenwen's heart. Every chance encounter was like watering a sweet spring for it, 
until the increasingly strong roots were firmly rooted in her heart, and the seed also squeezed through the soil called shyness and broke through. Chen Wenwen finally realized that she really fell in love with Lu Mingfei. What Chen Wenwen didn't know was that Lu Mingfei had planted a towering tree called Painted Pear Clothes in his heart three years ago, with lush flowers and branches, and no extra gaps to accommodate any other wild flowers. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Difficult to Peace the Mind You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Difficult to Peace the Mind Has Lu Miao Miao Come Yet? The door to the conference room was pushed open, and a tall and thin man in a dark green uniform walked out. The man had a prominent eastern face, and his white teeth and dark skin were in stark contrast when he smiled while speaking. The man's dark green uniform looks exquisitely crafted, with golden silk edges rolling at the corners. The golden cufflinks and buttons are all hand-sewn with silver thread, and the deep rose red scarf is embroidered with a dying giant tree pattern on the chest. Lu Mingfei knew that it was the emblem of Castle College. Ignatius The Half-Decayed World Tree Although the dark green uniform does not have any brand logo and looks more like a customized school uniform style, who is present here is not a sharp-eyed elite. At a glance, it can be seen that the materials and texture of this uniform are quite advanced, coupled with the extraordinary demeanor of the examiner's every move, making people cannot help but feel that this statement is not obvious. Castle College is truly a prestigious school that can associate with the University of Chicago. Lu Miao Miao, who is known as the beautiful piano girl, stood up like a conditioned reflex, like a newly recruited egg suddenly named by the instructor during military training. Her simple answer couldn't help but drag a few vibrato notes, here. I am your examiner Yi Sheng, come with me. After the man briefly introduced himself, Lu Miao Miao obediently followed the man into the conference room, not forgetting to turn around and close the door. Senior Yi Sheng Lu Mingfei stared at the tightly closed door and murmured to himself. Senior. Do you know this examiner, Lu Mingfei? Chen Wenwen looked at Lu Mingfei in surprise. I don't know each other, do I? Lu Mingfei still looked at the tightly closed door. Lu Mingfei, when you shout, the senior doesn't think it's a certainty for you to enter Castle College, does it? Zhao Menghua looked at Lu Mingfei with a hint of provocation. Lu Mingfei didn't even bother to give Zhao Menghua a foolish look, but ignored him as if he were heir. After all, the big tree wouldn't pay attention to mayflies, and the giant dragon wouldn't overlook ants. In the eyes of Lu Mingfei, Zhao Menghua was no different from the kindergarten brat downstairs, dragging a blue snot and wearing open crotch pants, and exchanging harsh words for a lollipop. That child threw snot at you, do you still insist on blowing it back like that? Will the price drop or not? Moreover, Lu Mingfei didn't have much desire to communicate or argue with Chen Wenwen and Zhao Menghua who were right in front of him, because his thoughts had already flown to the ends of the earth after seeing Yi Sheng, a familiar and unfamiliar senior. At this moment, it should not only be senior Yi Sheng sitting in the conference room, but also senior Jiu De Yaji, who is only separated by a wall from him. In the near future, this couple who have not yet expressed their feelings will probably embrace their passionate love and end their lives in peace under the cold and pitch black Three Gorges Reservoir. Suppressed, dull, and suffocating, the two of them were trapped under the dark Three Gorges water, but still wanted to burn the ashes of their lives to bring the mission target back to the academy. On that day, candlelight and white doves rose and fell on the square of Castle Academy. The secret party not only lost a pair of fairy-like beauties, but also two brave and generous warriors. This has always been a deep sense of unease in Lu Mingfei's heart. Perhaps this is the meaning of his dream existence, Lu Mingfei thought so. He instinctively clenched his fist resting on his knee, with veins bulging from the back of his hand. This is also the most important reason why he has been persistent in strength and diligent in swordsmanship for the past three years. He has seen himself who has done nothing, like a stubborn and cowardly dead child holding on to an unforgettable past and refusing to let go, making mistakes again and again, never growing up. 
Lu Mingfei doesn't want to become like that and is also afraid of becoming like that. This time, he will desperately rewrite those sorrowful and desolate elegies, and cut off those tragedies called regrets one by one. Next, Su Xiaoqiang. The door to the conference room was pushed open, and Yi Xing politely escorted Lu Miao Miao out. Everyone present, like copying and pasting, looked up at the first piano girl who had only persisted for ten minutes before game over. They thought to themselves that even if they couldn't pass the level, they couldn't lose so quickly. Only Lu Mingfei looked at Yi Sheng, secretly thinking of earth-shattering and world-changing events in his mind. Lu Miao Miao was already somewhat aggrieved, but now she is being stared at by everyone like a silver-backed gorilla in a zoo. She can no longer hold back her embarrassment and loneliness, her eyes slightly red, and she picks up her backpack without saying a word and quickly escapes. Having learned from Lu Miao Miao's past experiences, even the fearless little celestial maiden was immediately named and straightened up, mechanically following Yi Sheng into the conference room. Except for Lu Mingfei, the other people in the room had visible, I'm very nervous, written on their faces. Lu Mingfei, aren't you nervous? Chen Wenwen asked curiously as she looked at Lu Mingfei's unchanged expression. Just have a normal heart. Castle is a strange school, and their selection criteria are quite special. Whether or not they can enter is actually written in the family tree for a long time, but for the vast majority of people, not being able to get into it is actually a good thing, said Lu Mingfei. You seem to know them very well, Chen Wenwen said curiously. Pretend to be a ghost. Zhao Menghua sneered. Just five minutes later, little Tianyu walked out of the door with a face full of anger. She grabbed her backpack and made a less intimidating face towards the polite Yixing in the back, stomped her feet hard, and then left. Zhao Menghua. Yixing Yin. Before Zhao Menghua entered the door, he gave Lu Mingfei a provocative look, which probably meant. I know you always put on an airs of knowing everything and trying to scare people, but in fact, you are afraid to death. This despicable trick has no effect on me, Zhao Menghua. Wait, now it's your turn, Mr. Zhao, to perform on stage. Hmm Zhao Menghua did give Lu Mingfei a very exciting performance. Changing his face. Mr. Zhao entered with a manly and aloof demeanor, saying, I, Zhao Menghua, can't even interview anyone, and I can't even think about it. Then, less than three minutes later, he appeared as if he had been struck by a bolt from the blue with an unattainable expression on his face. This college is toxic. Zhao Menghua reluctantly left the scene after leaving with regret. Chen Wenwen. Yi Xing Xian read out the name of the next interviewee. Chen Wenwen suddenly stood up with a thump in her heart, her body stiff, like a high dot ranking official suddenly called by the emperor in the morning court, unaware whether the next second was to announce the reputation of being promoted or the death penalty of dragging out and beheading. Watching her colleagues in the main hall being killed by the emperor one by one, leaving only Lu Mingfei with a life dot saving straw, Chen Wenwen looked back helplessly at Lu Mingfei and said, Lu Mingfei, I'm a bit scared. An ordinary boy, upon seeing Chen Wenwen's demeanor, couldn't help but stumble like a deer. He knelt down on the spot, count out three times and nine times to the emperor, praying that the emperor would be punished lightly. If not, he would be executed together with the Chen attendant. But is Lu Mingfei an ordinary minister? He didn't say anything, just replied with a plain smile from Chen Wenwen, but this smile was actually quite thought-provoking. It's like telling her. I, the Prime Minister, have long been a prominent figure around the Emperor and his elderly family. I know all the insider information. What kind of world have I never seen before? Why don't you pretend to be weak in front of me, Chen Shirlang? It's better to die generously. You'll have to die sooner or later. I'll comfort you a few words, don't you have to die. In the end, Chen Wenwen persisted for fifteen minutes before walking out in a disheveled manner. She looked at Lu Mingfei's face, which had no tension, and tried several times to say something but then remained silent. Why don't I wait for you here? Chen Wenwen finally asked Lu Mingfei. 
no need to wait for me. You go first, I will stay inside for a long time. Lu Mingfei replied with a bright smile, but this smile was not handed to Chen Wenwen but towards Yi Sheng. Then he asked a question that even Yi Sheng couldn't figure out. Senior, are you ready? End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Perfect Answer Sheet You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Perfect Answer Sheet Do I Need to Prepare Anything? Yi Sheng was taken aback by the boy with a friendly smile in front of him, muttering to himself. Strange, why does this guy wearing a knockoff Loro Piena ask himself if he's ready? Who is the interviewer and who is the student? Hey! Chen Wenwen, on the other hand, looked at Lu Mingfei's back with some confusion. She realized that although she had seen him so many times and secretly looked at him so many times, it seemed like she had never truly entered the heart of this big boy. Countless intentional or unintentional encounters, and countless missed opportunities, sometimes a simple, hello, so coincidental, is considered a greeting, while at other times he just buries his head in a book or looks into the distance. She seems to never be in his eyes. Lu Mingfei what answer are you looking for in a book full of philosophical significance? Why are you unsheathing your sword ten thousand times a day in the kendo gym? Often looking into the distance, who has drawn the curve of your mouth? Chen Wenwen never knew one of them, so she could only silently gaze at Lu Mingfei's back, until the other person completely disappeared into the door before she left with a gloomy expression. At this moment, there were only three people in the huge conference room, including Lu Mingfei, Yi Sheng, and a girl wearing the same uniform as Yi Sheng in her upper body and a dark green dress in her lower body. The girl has white hair and red pupils, and her legs under the dress are slender and pure white. Her smile is sweet, and when she smiles, her cheeks will sink into two cute dimples, like a quietly blooming small flower. Hello, my name is Jiu Dea Ji, and I am also one of the examiners this time, mainly responsible for asking questions and taking notes. The girl stood up and bowed to Lu Mingfei, a typical Japanese etiquette. Hello, Sister Yaji, Lu Mingfei responded with a bow. Japanese is so standard. Jyota Yaji covered her mouth, her eyes widened with surprise. If she hadn't known Lu Mingfei's resume, she would have even thought that the other person had had experience studying in Japan. In fact, I have only self-taught the most basic 50 tones in a few daily sentences, thinking that I will probably use them in the future. Lu Mingfei smiled and said humbly, but the word, probably, was replaced with, definitely, in his mind. Do you have any plans to go to Japan in the future? asked Jiu Dea Ji. I have been fascinated for a long time, Lu Mingfei nodded. Jiu Dea Ji's sense of familiarity with the boy instantly increased a bit, and she smiled before opening her notebook. So, that's all for the small talk. Let's officially start the interview, right? Jiu De Yaji put away the friendly smile on his face, which was like that of a neighbor's sister, and put on a serious and serious face. Do you believe there are aliens in the world? Jiu De Yaji asked softly. Sure enough, it's a question that doesn't seem like carbon-based organisms can ask. Lu Mingfei sneered inwardly. Castle Academy likes to do this kind of giant panda ordering takeout thing. The bamboo shoots have arrived home. If it were in the past, he would probably be at a loss when facing this problem, his mind would crash, and he would talk about some Martian language that he couldn't even understand. I completely don't know that even if he and J.U. Delejai were to stare and pretend to be mute, Professor Gudrian would probably shield him from admission with the statement, really. He didn't say anything. It's perfect. Silence is the highest state of loneliness. Because this interview is fundamentally a cover-up for Castle College to win him over. However, the current Lu Mingfei is not the same as before. He, who is familiar with popular literature and philosophy, actually has a little unique insights on this issue. Lu Mingfei does not mind delving into it with the two examiners. Before answering this question, I would like to ask Sister Yaji another question. Lu Mingfei looked extremely serious. What? 
Jyota Yaji didn't react for a moment. Who asked who? Senior sister, do you believe in light? What route is this? Jyo Dea Ji was momentarily stunned, just like the interviewee who had just heard her ask questions about aliens. When she faced Lu Mingfei's question, a deep sense of absurdity surged in her mind. Just like the river god picking up an axe and asking the woodcutter who passed by, did you drop a gold axe or a silver axe? He was waiting for the woodcutter to answer truthfully, I dropped an iron axe. But when the woodcutter asked him back, you don't even know which axe I dropped. How did you treat the river god like this? The river god was stunned on the spot and shouted in his throat, how could this guy not play the trick at all? Jyota Yaji looked at Yi Sheng with a hint of help in his eyes, only to find that the latter also had an expression that was clearly struck by the question. Are you teasing the examiner? Yi Sheng frowned and asked with uncertainty. I swear I absolutely didn't mean that, I was asking seriously, Lu Mingfei shook his head. I don't know if you've noticed, but the essence of these two questions actually coincides to some extent. The meme, Do You Believe in Light, originated from Diga Ultraman. Because children's beliefs turn into light and come back from death, asking, Do you believe in light, is actually asking, Do you believe in Ultraman in this world? If you ask an adult this question, the other person will naturally feel that you are joking or teasing them, just like seniors and senior sisters do, but if you ask a child, they will most likely confidently and excitedly shout, I believe in light and believe in Ultraman. Why do you believe it? Because children naturally think that if there was no light, wouldn't the world be pitch black? If there was no Ultraman, who would defeat the monster? For children, what is a monster? It's a bad person, a sin, the guy who took the lollipop from you in childhood, a collection of all the evil in the world. So if there is evil, there must be justice, if there are monsters, there must be Ultraman, if there is darkness, there must be light. So I think it would be more appropriate to replace the question of, do you believe in aliens, with, do you want to believe in aliens? Is there any difference? Jyota Yaji asked in a daze. Of course there is. Lu Ming didn't hit the nail on the head, as if waiting for this question. Objectively speaking, aliens are very likely to exist. If humans can develop civilization to this height, there must be organisms with the ability to push civilization to a higher level. I don't know if the two of you have read The Three-Body Problem. There is a shield called Jizi, which is a high-dot-tech artificial intelligence used by the Three-Body Problem to restrict human civilization. If the three-body problem 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 It is more likely that aliens heights have far exceeded the constraints of three dot dimensional space. Just like humans and ants, ants are two dot dimensional creatures. When we stand in front of them, they only think we are a high wall and not that we are higher dot level creatures. So, is it possible that aliens are creatures that have been biogenerated in higher dimensions than humans? It's just that humans cannot explore them at this stage. Subjectively speaking, I am also willing to believe in the existence of aliens, just like children believe in Ultraman in the world. Aliens have filled my fantasies about a vast world other than human civilization. Because of aliens, Human interstellar exploration has added an important significance, the universe is vast and mysterious, and because of aliens, we don't seem so lonely. The two examiners, Yi Sheng and Jiu De Yaji, exchanged a glance and looked at each other in confusion. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 On Kendo You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 On Kendo in the Afternoon at the city youth palace, Musashi Kendo Hall. This guy doesn't wear any protective gear, 
and he has been practicing straight from start to finish for over a thousand times. Where did he get a beginner? No one even kicked him out. Shut up. You're a newcomer who doesn't understand the rules. Don't use your ignorance to casually speculate about that adult. There are two special beings in our Youth Palace Kendo Hall who are revered as the Youth Palace Sword Saint, and that one is one of them. Both of these adults have strength in Kendo that surpasses the director. Sai. Didn't the curator have already passed the seventh grade exam this year? They are actually stronger than the curator in the seventh grade at this age. In a corner of the dojo, a young man wearing a white and black sword costume and thick white socks was waving his sword towards the air. He was surrounded by an incredibly empty space, with no one approaching. If it seems to beginners who have not yet started swordsmanship that the uniform movements of young people are too monotonous, just drawing and waving swords, even children who have not yet graduated from elementary school can master this simple set of movements through training. But any old man who has stayed at the kendo gym for some time knows it well, and this is one of the daily coursework that young people must go through. Even the more careful swordsman could see that even though the young man swung the bamboo knife thousands of times, his breathing remained long and without any signs of disorder. What was even more terrifying was that the angle, frequency, and force of each swing of the young man were incredibly precise, comparable to a set mechanical program. Moreover, boys generally maintain the same color scheme for their swordsmanship attire, with white on the top and black on the bottom. This is often done in areas such as Hokkaido, Aikido, or high-end clothing. Without a corresponding high-end temperament, wearing different colors will only make people appear very feminine. But even in such attire, there is no sense of discord or abruptness when worn on the young man. Instead, it fits perfectly with his aura as if the young man was born to wear it this way. Mingfei, I heard you're going abroad too. The middle-aged man, holding a protective mask in one hand and a bamboo knife in the other, approached the young man. The middle-aged man has a friendly smile, around the age of forty, and his slender chin is covered in iron-green stubble. It's probably only been a few days now, curator. By the way, will you be lonely after I leave? Lu Mingfei kept waving his sword while joking with the middle-aged man, even if he used it twice, he couldn't make his movements any more stagnant. Through ten thousand daily plowing until commanded by his arm, the sword seemed to have long become a part of Lu Mingfei's body, and the movement of wielding the sword was naturally no different from breathing and blinking. You're not the daughter of Huang Hua, why are you so lonely when you leave? The middle-aged man laughed and cursed, get out of here early. You and Chu Zihang, you two have been staying in my kendo hall for so many years. Do you know how others chew on my tongue behind my back? They say that the students who come here are all admirers of the names of those two young palace sword saints. That old curator has long been useless in name and effect. Do you think he's annoying but not? Who's such an immature child? Can you eat food recklessly and say that? Lu Mingfei looked angry and spoke generously, what does it mean that the curator is getting old and useless? He said it like how powerful the curator was when he was young. You kid. The middle-aged man raised his bamboo knife as if to strike Lu Mingfei, but found that the latter was not scared at all, so he angrily withdrew his bamboo knife. But it's true that when I was young, I was nothing compared to you two. Who could have imagined that you only started practicing swordsmanship at the age of fifteen, and in just three years, you had already surpassed me, an old man who had been studying swordsmanship for almost thirty years. The middle-aged man couldn't help but sigh. Don't bother, who said you're getting old, the curator. Who was the first one I had to worry about? At the age of over forty, I won the title of seventh Dan. If you're even older than that, wouldn't you be easy to get? A hundred-year-old swordsman is none other than you, curator. Lu Mingfei was arrogant. Stinky kid, how about changing ways to curse? The middle-aged man slapped Lu Mingfei on the head. If it weren't for the rigid rules of Japanese kendo and the serious issue of seniority, 
wouldn't it be easy for you and Chu Zihang to go and grab a seven dan and eight dan sword? After Chu Zihang left, you were quite bored, right? He had been studying courses with me for a whole season in elementary school and didn't get in touch. Three years ago, you brought him to me to practice swordsmanship with you. Every time we had a showdown, my small temple was almost crowded out by the onlookers. By the way, which of you two won more? The middle dot aged man asked gossip. Senior brother has won many times. During the first year of learning swordsmanship, almost all of them were won by senior brother. Later, I was lucky enough to surpass senior brother a few times, Lu Mingfei said with a smile. That's not a stroke of luck. How could there be a stroke of luck in a swordsmanship duel? It all depends on your steady and adaptable strength, said the middle dot aged man. Actually, I'm also curious about your current strength. Are you interested in sparring with me, this old bone, before leaving? Your students are all here, curator. Aren't you afraid that you won't be able to lift your head in front of them in the future? Lu Mingfei stopped waving his sword and whispered, pointing to the young swordsmen dressed in black who were looking at them from afar. Losing to our youth palace sword saint is not a shame. The man laughed heartily, and you forgot that you were also brought by me. The higher your ability, the more I can guide you. As a teacher, the more I am naturally pleased. I hope more people will come to enroll in your swordsmanship class, Lu Ming smirked and exposed the man's true thoughts. He swung his sword fiercely in the end, and the air burst like bamboo knots. The boy sheathed his sword and followed the man to step on the spotless solid wood floor, walking to the center of the field. Still not wearing protective gear, Ming Fei the man asked softly. Curator, you know, I didn't pick up the sword just because I longed for it in Japanese kendo. On the contrary, I really dislike the complicated formalities in Japanese kendo. Lu Ming Fei looked serious and shook his head in a deep voice, that thin mask can't resist the enemy's killing intent or protect important people in life and death. The onlookers loudly cheered the title of Youth Palace Sword Saint, raising their arms and cheering loudly for the young man's unconventional yet generous remarks. Only the middle dot aged man heard the sharp and sharp tone of Lu Mingfei's voice. Both sides bowed ninety degrees in the field, even though the middle dot aged man's gaze under his protective gear was as deep as the sea, he still couldn't see through the young man standing opposite him, who was only eighteen years old and in his prime. Mingfei, are you facing such a dangerous situation in the future? Sword of murder, what kind of old grudges are buried in your young heart? Since that's the case, as the leader of your swordsmanship, I am willing to become the first stepping stone on your swordsmanship. The swords were intertwined, and although they were just two bamboo knives facing each other, people seemed to smell the bloody storm that came rushing towards them. The middle dot aged man scanned his eyes up and down like a radar, searching tirelessly and seizing the decisive moment. Lu Mingfei, who was facing him, did not show any flaws. He was towering and motionless yet majestic, like a lion. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Showing the present flow, shaking the cassock You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 6 Showing the present flow, shaking the cassock, ha! Huh? The middle dot aged man interrupted his drink, and his bamboo knife in his hand was like a rainbow crossing the sky. The sound of bursting into the air, accompanied by the impending mountain rain, hung down on Lu Mingfei's head. Show the flow, cut the robe. The characteristic of Xian Lu is the emphasis on the large robe slashing from above, hoping to kill the enemy on the first strike, and making a loud roar during the attack is also its feature, aiming to seize the opportunity to intimidate the enemy in momentum and prepare for a decisive attack. In the late years of the shogunate, the newly emerged samurai of the Satsuma domain defeated many swordsmen from other schools with just one move. Although this move was as simple as a straight cut, it was also a sword light accumulated through years of honing. Since the middle dot aged man came into contact with Xian Lu, he has always firmly adhered to the rule of splitting Xian Lu 3000 times in the morning and 3000 times in the evening. For years, day and night, he remained unmoved by lightning, 
so this is also his ultimate move to suppress the situation. Similarly to the three board acts that almost no one can resist, few can withstand the hand movements of a middle-aged man. Even high-level swordsmen in the sixth rank are often just in a daze caused by the middle-aged man's sudden drinking when their helmets shake and dust settles. However, in the face of Lu Mingfei, the behavior of middle-aged men taking action is considered a last resort. Because the longer he faced off with Lu Mingfei, the more palpitations he felt. This young man, who had only been practicing swordsmanship for three years and was only eighteen years old, gave him the feeling of being as calm and flawless as an old swordsman who had undergone countless trials and tribulations. The middle-aged man knows that if he continues to procrastinate, his disadvantage will only become greater and greater. Because Lu Ming is not always as stable as Mount Taishan, but his momentum is virtually consumed by the other side. Kendo duels are the most imposing. If his momentum has been steadily suppressed by the opponent as time passes, then this duel will not only be self-defeating but also more like a hammer. A rainbow flashed past the top of the head, and the bamboo knife wrapped in nylon rope rolled up with the sound of wind blowing towards his face. However, Lu Ming did not respond to this shocking blow, which was just the simplest upward move, without any energy, let alone the ferocity of breaking off the drink or bulging veins. Just raising his hand and lifting it up, the middle-aged man's seemingly unstoppable blow was casually lifted away by Lu Mingfei, and the rainbow was lifted back into the sky, hanging high in the sky and unable to fall. Lu Mingfei's response to the middle-aged man was also a move called the Lion Manifestation in the Samadhi Manifestation Flow. Unlike the middle-aged man who approached the realm of Yun Yao, Lu Mingfei's cassock chopping had indeed produced the Yun Yao effect. The downward chopping action was clean and sharp, so fast that it was difficult to catch with the naked eye, as if lightning flashed through the clouds during thunderstorms and rain. The bamboo knife fell straight, but the middle-aged man was stunned. For a moment, he truly felt that he was facing a fierce lion holding a knife and falling from the sky. He didn't even have time to return to the blade block, even though it was just a normal combat weapon and a standard training bamboo knife, but he truly smelled the breath of death from Lu Mingfei's strike. With extensive experience in swordsmanship, he staggered back half a step on the brink of death with palpitations. Bang! After lightning and thunder, the bamboo knife struck the middle-aged man's mask with a crisp sound, but there was no expected interruption of the knife or deformation of the mask. The force of the powerful blow was surprisingly light. The victory was announced, and from the sidelines came thunderous cheers and thunderous applause. The children shouted the name, Youth Palace Sword Saint, and worshipped the idol who had just finished the battle with a thunderous blow standing in front of them, and older swordsmanship enthusiasts have long been satisfied with recording videos, waiting to delve into this unfinished battle when they return. Only middle-aged men know it well. If it were a truly bloody knife, and he happened to be the imaginary enemy in the young man's heart, that cold and ruthless sword light would definitely pierce through the thin as fragile paper mask in an instant, dividing his great head and entire body in half. I offended you, director. Lu Mingfei withdrew his bamboo knife, bowed first, and then changed his usual playful and smiling expression. You kid is different from Lu Mingfei's calm and composed demeanor. The middle-aged man was still immersed in the shadow of death for a second, and the next second, the guy who seemed to be about to fight you to death and cut you in half with a knife looked at you with a cheap smile, as if a dead pig is not afraid of boiling water. You kid, I don't remember teaching you the sword technique of showing off. The middle-aged man grabbed Lu Mingfei's neck with a fierce aura, truly summoned him. When did the lion that you secretly learned show up and even become Yunyao? You should know that even if he has been showing off his lust for ten years, he can only touch the threshold of Yun Yao, and this can definitely be called a natural talent among a group of swordsmen. How old is Lu Mingfei? How many years have I been practicing swordsmanship? Is this kid really human? No wonder Lu Mingfei often mutters in front of him, the gap between people is greater than the gap between people and pigs. Now it seems like a wise saying. Let go, 
the curator is going to be strangled. Lu Mingfei vigorously patted the middle. Aged man Kong Wuli's arm and begged for mercy loudly. Don't make me sound like a swordsmanship thief, okay? Didn't I pay your tuition fee before? Besides, if you want to steal, I will also steal. Senior brother won't come looking for you to steal. Stinky kid, it's easy to say. Pay me one semester's tuition and stay with me for three years. I'll lay a foundation for you. You can't take me as the head of this dojo. I wish I could just settle for food, drink, and sex here. The man cursed loudly. That means your dojo gives people a sense of homelessness. Lu Mingfei shouted. You're the only one who can talk. The middle-aged man finally let go of Mingfei's dog head. But in the next moment, Lu Mingfei was hit hard on the back of his head. He hugged the dog's head, howling in pain, completely lacking the expert demeanor of a middle-aged man. I'm praising you, curator. You can just take revenge and damage my wise and powerful brain. How can I deal with it? I didn't hit you, the middle-aged man spread out his hands to show his innocence. It was me. A playful voice mixed with anger came from behind, and Lu Mingfei and the middle-aged man suddenly turned around. Standing behind them was a tall and bright figure, with red hair tied up in a high ponytail at the back of the head. A small yellow vest was paired with a sky-blue open-button dot shirt, and tight-fitting jeans wrapped around her slender legs. Due to the rules of wearing shoes in the dojo, the girl appeared very cute even with bare feet. Lu Mingfei The shining girl looked at Lu Mingfei with a hint of gritting her teeth in her expression. She looked either robbed of her wealth or robbed of her appearance, like a resentful girl who came to collect debts. No no. Lu Mingfei paused for a moment and tentatively shouted. Damn it. This time it was the girl's turn to look bewildered. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Nua 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 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Nua 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 Nua, how did you know me? The girl had a ghostly expression on her face. Didn't you shout out my name all at once? Lu Mingfei rolled his eyes and thought to himself, no wonder that naive person would wholeheartedly fall in love with Nono, because the girl in front of him was really beautiful. Her eyebrows, wrinkled in surprise, were very ancient and strange, like a finely carved ruby. Ko Lumingfei has long been a foolish monkey hiding in a small cave and waiting for someone to take him away. After three years of chopping in the air at the Kendo Hall, Lu Mingfei's heart was already as cold as a knife. Although the girl in front of him was beautiful, it was not enough to shake his rock-solid, heart of painting. I can call out your name because you are my target. Nono raised his eyebrows with a crossover. Ha! What I mean is, you are the goal of our college this time. Nono realized the ambiguity in his words and quickly changed his mind. He said, I've sent you so many friend applications before, why haven't they been approved? Nono gritted her teeth and looked at Lu Mingfei. She found Lu Mingfei's contact information on the train departing from Castle College. During this time, she sent more than 20 friend applications, but there was no news of them. She didn't even have a way to play tricks on this prospective new student. Because my aunt once said that there are too many scammers in today's society, she asked me not to casually add strangers' contact information. Lu Mingfei looked innocent. In fact, he had long known that the big-faced cat avatar had been persistently submitting a friend request to harass him, which was no-no. However, he really didn't have much intention of getting in touch with the other person, mainly because he didn't know what to talk to even after adding it. Can we talk about how great her boyfriend Caesar's pectoral muscles are? Or how popular is Chu Zihang at Castle College? These roads are not all clear, so he and Nono have nothing to talk about. When I posted my friend application for the second to last time, I made a note to you saying that I am not a bad person and asked you to add it quickly. Nono was angry. How fresh. No bad person would say they're bad. Are you treating me like a fool or are you just a fool? 
Lu Mingfei looked at No No with a silly expression on his face. You. No No widened his eyes, feeling like he was punching cotton with all his might. This was the first time in her life that she felt a deep sense of powerlessness when facing a boy, and the little witch was defeated for the first time. This guy named Lu Mingfei was clearly talking nonsense with a serious face, but she didn't know how to refute it for a moment. Besides, there are more than ten people participating in the interview, why are you so interested in me? asked Lu Mingfei. No No was left speechless when asked, and she couldn't tell Lu Mingfei directly, yes, yes, you are the one appointed by our college, right? Fortunately, she reacted quite quickly, 0.1 seconds was enough to make her think of an excuse that could justify herself. Because Chu Zihang is now my classmate, and I heard him say you are very familiar with each other. Noah fabricated a lie without feeling guilty. I am very familiar with you. My senior brother usually accompanies me to practice swordsmanship, and I also chat with him when I have nothing to do. Lu Mingfei nodded on the surface, but sneered inwardly. You and senior brother are not in the same camp. Originally, Chu Zihang had a personality of not being able to hit a fart with eight sticks, and he would still tell you who he knew in high school. Do you consider yourself Xiaomi? That's right, no wonder just now I saw that your appearance flow and Chu Zihang's style are exactly the same. With such strength, Lionheart will probably be able to become a vice president. No no muttered. Lionheart will. Lu Mingfei repeated the familiar name. He knew it was the oldest student organization in Castle College, symbolizing a group of people who could release the lion's heart, and Chu Zihang was now the Lion King of the Lion Pack. Noa Noa mistakenly thought that Lu Mingfei didn't understand the meaning of the Lionheart Society and took the initiative to explain, a student organization in the college with a secondary school illness, have you watched, Jackie Chan's adventures? It's similar to the shadow core inside. No No's personality is like this. She often watches anime that only boys like and plays games that only boys are good at, to prove that as a girl, she is not inferior to all the boys in the world combined. More importantly, it's because she likes Xiaoyu in Jackie Chan's adventures, like a crazy little crazy person, very much like her. Well, and both the Shadow Core and the Lionheart Club like to wear black clothes, tirelessly and with strong strength. Most importantly, in No No's opinion, they are really mediocre. Lu Mingfei smiled awkwardly and politely. He was crazy roast that you also mean that the elder Marshall brothers are the second best. Is it not your boyfriend who wears a suit and formal clothes and has to open his neck to tell the whole world how perfect his chest muscles are? You call Chu Zihang senior brother quite smoothly. Shout for senior sister to listen. No no raised his eyebrows. No shouting. Lu Mingfei refused very decisively, thinking to himself that Chen Madong, this bad woman, had finally revealed her true face in Lushan. Why can Chu Zihang do it, but I can't? No no furrowed his pretty eyebrows and asked. Because Chu Zihang is indeed my senior brother on the path of swordsmanship, and we are also the same teacher. It's normal to call him a senior brother, right? Lu Mingfei pointed to the middle dot aged man who had been watching the play for a long time. But we're not familiar, unless you pay respects to the director now, but that way you can only be considered my junior sister instead of my senior sister. But at Castle College, I am indeed one year older than you. No No Ong looked up, like a proud swan. The interview results haven't been released yet, haven't they? Even if I join Castle College, I can only call you, Senior Sister, instead of, Senior Sister. Whether I call you, Senior Sister, or not depends on my mood. The title, Senior Brother, is reserved for intimate people, and we are not familiar with each other. It's best not to have the idea of making me your little brother, I'm not a primary school student anymore. What's wrong with the relationship between big sister and little brother? Lu Mingfei hugged his chest with both hands and said a lot before spitting out two words coldly. Naive. It was as if he had been hit in the heart by a heavy punch, causing No-No to feel dizzy and cover his chest, staggering two steps. 
From childhood to adulthood, countless boys have pursued and flattered her, even crying and shouting to be her little brother. This is the only time she has been rejected by a boy and even ridiculed for being childish. You're tough, Lu Mingfei. No No gritted his teeth and gave Lu Mingfei a look of, the green mountains will not change, the green waters will flow for a long time, let's wait and see at Castle Academy, then shook her high ponytail and left. Stinky kid, your girlfriend. After the red-haired girl left, the middle-aged man thought he had seen some tricks and approached to ask. He has a boyfriend, a wealthy and handsome Italian. Lu Mingfei shook his head. Is that your mistress? Puff. Curator, are you old and confused? You can eat randomly, but you can't speak randomly. Lu Mingfei had a black line on his forehead, and if he had a mouthful of water in his mouth, he would definitely spray the other person's face on the spot. If your words are heard by someone else's boyfriend, be careful not to let them say a word that doesn't agree, they will buy your family's dojo together with you, and then send you to Africa to become an old black slave. So who is she? The middle-aged man was cunning and gossiped to the end. A bad woman who likes to spread love and recruit young men everywhere. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Late Night Thoughts you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Late Night Thoughts Late at Night, at the Legion Hotel The night draped a black curtain over this tall building, but the conference room remained brightly lit, like a lonely flower embellished on a huge black cloth. Yi Xingfu annotated the interview answers of the students recorded by Jyoti Yaji during the day before the case. This shouldn't have been a troublesome thing that would make people forget to eat and sleep, but because of that guy named Lu Mingfei, he almost added ten times more workload to Yisheng. No No is stirring up trouble with Jyota Yaji, saying that he met Lu Mingfei during the day. However, he didn't expect this guy to be quite arrogant. He not only put on a bad airs but also showed great disrespect towards her senior sister. How did he get this after entering school? Not allowed to step on the heads of all senior brothers and sisters and fly into the sky. To dampen his morale, we must deduct a few more points from his interview score. Jiu Deaji said that if you are wrong about No No, Lu Mingfei is the most polite and knowledgeable child she has ever met. Even if she and Yi Xing Lai answer the interview questions, Lu Mingfei can't answer them well. Besides, Professor Gudirian has the final say whether to deduct points or not. How was the interview result? Chow Chow said as the door to the conference room was pushed open, and the figure carrying a suitcase walked in dusty. That was a burly old man with gray hair and knowledgeable glasses on his nose. Wearing a wide suit didn't fit him very well, making him look a bit bulky. He looked more like a cultured professional wrestler. Professor Gudrian, Yi Xing stood up, I'm sorry I haven't finished commenting yet. A student named Lu Mingfei answered too. Lu Mingfei. How did he answer? Let's finish speaking. The wrinkled old face of this German guy from his hometown was filled with nervousness and anticipation, looking like an old gambling dog waiting for the double-colored ball winning number, rather than an old professor who had been nominated for a Nobel Prize. You can take a look for yourself, Yi Sheng handed the notebook to Professor Guderian, who was burning with anger, with a mixture of tears and laughter. Is the old father who is waiting for his own son's college entrance examination just like that? If it weren't for his knowledge of Gudrian's style of not being close to women, he would have doubted whether Lu Mingfei was the illegitimate son of this old professor who was wandering among the people. This. These are all answers from Lu Mingfei. Professor Gudrian's incredulous eyes widened wide, and his glasses almost fell off the towering bridge of his Himalayan nose. Professor. Do you also think he answered too poorly? No no asked cunningly. Perfect. It's so perfect. Professor Gudrian held his notebook foolishly, his expression more like staring at a great artwork created by world.renowned craftsmen than at a student's answer. It's even more perfect than the best answer I could imagine. Distinguish from reason, answer from emotion. It's so touching. Do you have a tissue? I blew my nose. 
It's truly you, Lu Mingfei. Is it so powerful? Jiu Deaji was also frightened by the old man's almost crying expression and asked in a daze. The first question, he believed in the existence of aliens. His answer involved the theory of cosmic dimensions and the agency of human subjective consciousness, bluntly introducing the concept of loneliness. Moreover, he even put forward his own views on the flaws of the problem itself. The second question is that he believes in superpowers. He not only gave the word superpower a unique insight, but also studied so many superpower events in the world. The most classic thing he said is this sentence. I was born with the ability to surpass other species. In the third question, he pointed out at the beginning that the difference between idealism and materialism lies in the different objects of world unity. While discussing consciousness and matter, he actually proposed a direction that no one has ever thought about before. Why can't consciousness be a substance, or in other words, why can't matter be a consciousness? Professor Guderian's hand holding the notebook trembled slightly, as he carefully nurtured it as if discovering some rare treasure. Consciousness is material, isn't that ridiculous? No no shouted. If you have read Hegel's famous idealism, you will not think it is a fantasy. Idealism advocates that the objective spirit that exists independently of humans and nature is the origin of the world, and all things in the universe are products of the objective spirit. And Lu Mingfei's thoughts are even more extreme. He believes that spirit and material can be replaced to some extent. Professor Gudrian recited philosophical words one by one, which were even more emotional than marriage vows. For example, a stone, in material terms, is a mixture of certain elements, but when you use subjective and abstract words such as hard, comma, rough, comma, irregular, etc. to come together, you ultimately get this stone. The same goes for humans, but human existence is a more complex combination of spirit and material. And this question precisely reflects our mixed race, the combination of humans and dragons. We cannot strip ourselves of any of our own properties. How many mixed race species have lost themselves in their bloodline? But Lu Mingfei, I cannot see any confusion in his answer. He has such excellent bloodline, but he can face his contradictions so openly. He is truly the best good child, and I can fully understand the principal's evaluation of him as an S level. Professor Gudrian was moved to tears. S level. The other three people in the conference room exclaimed in surprise and looked at each other. A genuine S level. Our only S level. His answer is fully qualified to be entered into Norma's database as the latest full score answer, even in the celebrity quotes section of the library. Professor Gudrian shouted, ignoring his image and groping for his phone. I want to call his parents and enroll. Hurry up and apply for admission now. Professor. Yixing quickly stopped the seemingly crazy old man and pointed to the dark night outside the window. Lu Mingfei said that his aunt's temper is not very good. It's best not to call in the middle of the night when announcing the admission news, as she will be scolded. Undoubtedly our S level, even this step was within his expectations. The old man put down his phone, a silly smile on his face, and had already completely lost his dignity as a professor and castle interviewer. Tomorrow morning, you and I will come together and visit in person. Yi Sheng, Zhou De Yaji, and No No exchanged a glance. They had all heard rumors in the college that Professor Guderian and Professor Manstein were once mentally ill friends. They thought it was a joke made by an old dog who had been idle in the college for eight years. Now, they all believed this rumor deeply in their hearts. They huddled in the corner, looking at the old man who was crying bitterly, looking like a crazy dog, and laughing through tears, all feeling that the night seemed unusually cold. That night, Lu Ming was not suffering from insomnia. However, after maintaining a regular routine for three years, his rare insomnia is not too much, it's just that he doesn't have much desire to sleep tonight. The boy hid under the blanket, countless thoughts lingering in his heart. How bright red is the maple forest outside Castle College! Compared to crabapple flowers. 
Is it a bit more vast and a bit less graceful? Senior brother Chu Zihang, be quiet and keep your heart hidden. How much regret do you need to rest on to have a good night's sleep? Principal Anger, what kind of handsome and charming old man are you? How strong is the hatred that you hide under the mask of debauchery for a lifetime that remains unsolvable? Can giving you a big hug slightly dilute your sadness? What about you, Hua Li Yi? In the story, it is said that you are a witch-like girl. You must be even more beautiful than the cherry blossom tree in the thousand bird abyss, the kind that can make me indulge in you. What will happen? I really want to see you. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Visiting the Door You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Visiting the Door at 7 o'clock in the morning, Lu Ming was not at his aunt's house. Lu Mingfei was quietly practicing pronunciation on the balcony with a book of 1024 common Japanese vocabulary, while his aunt's family, as usual, were still immersed in unrealistic dreams at this point. Auntie transformed into a landlady with over ten properties in her dream, only responsible for collecting rent, beautifying herself, and playing mahjong with a group of wealthy ladies every day, feeling really comfortable. My uncle, on the other hand, owns a drawer of Marlborough and Patek Philippe. He is wearing a high dot end Brioni suit and is struggling with which watch to wear. He and his friends, who are either wealthy or wealthy, will buy a high dot end tea house or coffee shop to brag about. My cousin Lu Mingzi's dream road is definitely not something I don't want to guess because the content may be a bit inappropriate for children. Ding ding ding. The hurried doorbell pulled everyone back from their dreams to the cruel reality. Is your family dead? Ring the doorbell early in the morning. Aunt Mei Meng was interrupted and shouted angrily towards the door. Mom, who is it? I have to go to the youth palace to study English and mathematics in an hour, and I'm sure I won't be energetic in class later. Lu Mingzi complained, rubbing his sleepy eyes. Lu Mingfei said to himself, are you sure that your mental lethargy is only due to a lack of one hour of sleep? Uncle sat up from the bed and looked at his wife with messy hair, angry and almost ready to wield a knife to strike someone. For a moment, he didn't know whether to dissuade or try to continue his dream, after all, he struggled all night and finally chose the Patek Philippe Nautilus. Lu Mingfei went to open the door with an apologetic expression on his face. It seemed that whether it was midnight or morning, Aunt's mouth would always be so touching. At the moment the door was opened, a burly figure immediately squeezed into the aisle through the crack of the door and enthusiastically grabbed Lu Mingfei's hand, Lu Mingfei. I've seen you. Professor Guderian, is that right? Hello. Lu Mingfei looked at the old man in front of him with fiery eyes, eager to eat him in one bite, and calmly withdrew his hand. At this moment, he had the illusion of whether he was the reincarnation of the golden cicada. If Professor Guderian looked like a thirsty old monster at this moment, then Lu Mingfei must be the fattest Tang monk meat. If you don't give me a legitimate reason, no one will come up with my family today. Auntie prepared to block the door with a broom. Not only did she ask these unwelcome guests who disturbed their dreams early in the morning to pay some mental damages, but at least she had to sincerely apologize before she could let them go. However, when the aunt saw Professor Gudrian and Yi Sheng, who had already stepped into the door and were one head taller than her, the middle dot aged woman began to fear again. Her hand holding the broom couldn't help but shrink a bit and shouted loudly, Dad, come on. Uncle put on his clothes and quickly walked out of the door. His eyes were alert as he looked at the newcomer his mind racing to estimate the difference in combat effectiveness between his own side and the opponent, as well as whether to report to the police immediately. As soon as Lu Mingzi walked out of the room wearing light blue pajamas, he was escorted behind by his aunt like a lion guarding a calf. This is Professor Guderian from Castle College, which I mentioned to you. Lu Mingfei pointed to Guderian and introduced the group, this is my uncle, aunt, and cousin. Professor Gudrian. I've only heard of Gudmanin, which means good morning. Auntie still looked at the professor with a wary gaze. I see, you are the elders of Lu Mingfei. 
This child is so excellent that he cannot do without your daily urging. Professor Guderian waved his hand, and Yi Sheng immediately walked up with two boxes of gift boxes behind him. Excuse me, I came in a hurry and didn't have time to prepare. These are the Wui Rock tea I entrusted someone to bring from Fujian and Mao Tai from Goezhou. A small gift is not to be respected. Oh, Professor Gu, how embarrassing. The middle-aged woman said with embarrassment, but her hand honestly took the two boxes of gifts. The vigilance and suspicion in her eyes dissipated in an instant. Don't keep standing at the door, Lu Mingfei. Hurry up and move the chairs for the guests. The middle-aged woman's eyes were all narrowed with laughter. She handed her husband two boxes of gift boxes, and the man saw the five characters, Super, on the tea gift box and, Kwai Chao Matai Liquor, on the Baijiu gift box. He often went to high. End places, of course, knew that the value of these two gifts was definitely more than five figures, which could be called, valuable. The man was secretly shocked and nodded quietly at the woman, indicating that the gifts were all genuine and of great weight. The middle-aged woman's wrinkled face became even more cheerful, like a blooming chrysanthemum. Professor Guderian and Yi Xing moved to the living room, and the originally slightly crowded corridor finally became a bit empty. The two girls walked into the door, holding hands and chatting and laughing. Hello senior, Lu Mingfei greeted politely. Finally willing to take the initiative to call her senior sister. Nono glanced askance at Lu Mingfei, as well as the 1024 common Japanese words, on his green soft cover. My name is Senior Yaji, is someone a bit too narcissistic? Lu Mingfei rolled his eyes. Lu Mingfei. Are you polite? Nono gritted his teeth and wished to devour the boy who didn't take her seriously on the spot. Lu Mingfei didn't take Nono seriously, but Lu Mingzi's gaze was firmly fixed on him. The girl's dark red long hair cascaded behind her, her silver four-leaf clover earrings shimmered with a cool light, and under her dark green uniform skirt were a pair of straight legs wrapped in black stockings, with a pair of black Mary Jane shoes on her feet. Even if she was arguing with her cousin, the girl's blinking or frowning expression was as dazzling as a rose. Lu Mingfei, don't care about your cousin. Nono glanced at Lu Mingzi's lewd gaze and said coldly. What do I care about him if his eyes are long? Lu Mingfei spread out his hand, but when he saw Nono's increasingly cold gaze, he bent down and whispered a few words in Lu Mingzi's ear. The latter immediately shrank his head and ran away like a cat with its tail cut off. In fact, he was too lazy to care about whether Nono had any dirty thoughts in Yy Yy Lu Mingzi's mind, which had nothing to do with his Lu Mingfei. However, if Nono accidentally killed Lu Mingzi, he wouldn't be able to explain it to his uncle and aunt. What did you say to him? Nono asked as he looked at the chubby little man fleeing in a hurry. It's nothing, just honestly say you hate being stared at, let alone being such a sleazy little chubby guy like him, said Lu Mingfei. But what he actually told Lu Mingzi was that this girl has a boyfriend who works as a mafia in Italy. Someone used to like to stare at her legs, and then her mafia boyfriend dug out that person's eyeballs and fed them to the eagle. So, my dear cousin, do you also want to be fed to the eagle? Lu Mingfei, come over quickly. The uncle at the dining table waved excitedly, Professor Gu said he will give you a special scholarship. Guess how much scholarship you have? Professor Gudrian asked mysteriously. 36,000 per year. Lu Mingfei furrowed his brows and tried to pretend to be guessing seriously. Oh my god, it's truly you, Lu Mingfei. Professor Gudrian slammed the table and was shocked. How much? Upon hearing this number, Auntie stood up hesitantly, without considering whether the old professor's broad and powerful palm would damage her dining table. Are you sure the unit of the number you're discussing is Chinese yuan, not Japanese yen, Korean won, or Zimbabwean currency. It's not Chinese Yuan. Professor Gudrian shook his head and his aunt patted her chest with a look of, I just said, how could I give so much? It's in US dollars. End of this chapter.
Chapter 10. Words That Must Be Spoken. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10. Words That Must Be Spoken, A Year of 36,000 US Dollars, at the current exchange rate of 6.83, it is equivalent to 245,880 yuan in Chinese yuan. In four years, it will be 983,520 yuan, his. Once the number is linked to money, middle-aged women's computing power is definitely comparable to that of senior accountants. If the exchange rate doesn't fluctuate much in the coming years, then this is a huge sum of nearly 1 million yuan. In that era when inflation was not high, 1 million yuan was enough to buy a large elevator house in the city center area, 10 Mont Blanc watches, and even enroll Lu Mingzhe in a 20-year tutoring class. Is my nephew so outstanding? Aunt said sourly. Excellent. Professor Gudrian was so excited that he spoke incoherently. Look at him, his two eyes, one nose, and one mouth are just right, not much, not much. This looks like a smart child. My Mingza also has this appearance, and he is definitely a smart child. Professor, do you think there's a chance to go to your castle academy with his cousin? Auntie asked tentatively unwilling to be outdone. Let's talk about Ming Fei, Professor Gudrian smiled awkwardly and politely. Ming Fei is very excellent, but where is my Mingza worse than him? Auntie persisted in promoting her son. If the professors all come to visit her and she remains indifferent, wouldn't she be a mother in vain? Although I know that twisted melon is not sweet, if I don't twist it again, I won't even have bitter gourd. Excellence is actually just one factor. Professor Gudrian shook his head. Castle College actually hardly admits students to the outside world. However, Lu Mingfei's parents happen to be our honorary alumni who have donated and assisted the college, so there is no need to feel ashamed of receiving such a small scholarship. Lu Mingfei felt a thumping sensation in his heart, as a heavy door covered in dust was pushed open. Fresh air and sunlight seeped through the cracks of the door, leaving him feeling at a loss for a moment. Although he had known for a long time that he would hear news about his parents today, when someone really talks about this topic face dot to dot face with you, their feelings are completely different. The people you care about are far away in the sky, and you may have forgotten what they look like, but when you hear them from someone close by, it seems like you can vaguely see their contours. Lu Mingfei felt an itch in his heart, as if 10,000 ants were crawling over it. Before leaving, the principal handed me your parents' photos and letters. Gudrian took out the photos and letters from the inner pocket of his suit and stuffed them into Lumenfei's hand. The background color of the photo is the lush greenery of vines crawling all over the wall. In front of the climbing wall, men and women in home clothes stroll hand in hand in a garden that looks like an ancient castle. Under the sunset, they gaze at each other's faces and smile, as if the whole world is quiet and only they are left with each other. The boss is quite young and quite romantic, said the aunt with a pout after seeing the photo. The content of the letter is also very simple. It roughly states that I hope that Lu Mingfei is a very excellent and kind child, and I hope that President Anger can provide assistance for him to enter Castle College. I also implore the president to convey an important message to Lu Mingfei on their behalf. The signer of the letter is Giovanni, the mother of Lu Mingfei. In just a few words, Lu Mingfei repeated word by word and sentence by sentence in silence for a long time, until every word on the letter became so unfamiliar that he almost didn't recognize it. Professor, there's one more thing to convey, right? I want to hear it. Lu Mingfei suddenly looked up at Gudrian's eyes. Gudrian looked up, and the boy's face remained calm, but he saw that his eyes were actually filled with an emotion called longing. Mingfei, mom and dad love you. Professor Gudirian said this greeting with mixed emotions, but the pronunciation was a bit awkward. Lu Mingzi was the first to lose his tension, and his uncles and aunts laughed along. Yi Sheng and Zhou Deaji couldn't help but shake their heads with laughter. Only Nono, standing in the corner, saw that everyone was amused by this Western old professor's less authentic Chinese, 
while the boy still stared blankly at Professor Gudrian in laughter. His body trembled slightly, and there was light in his eyes. I love you too, Lu Mingfei said softly. Everyone's laughter seemed to be choked down in their throats, abruptly stopped. A Western old professor imitating parents confessing their love to a boy in broken Chinese is indeed a scene that can make people burst into laughter, while the boy foolishly responds to what seems more worthy of laughter, but they don't actually laugh. Because everyone realized at that moment that this didn't seem like something to be laughed at. The boy's voice was light but sincere, as if standing in front of him was not the unfamiliar old professor he had met for the first time, but his biological parents whom he had not seen in many years. Even if everyone laughed out loud, Lu Mingfei didn't have any embarrassment or wilting expression, as if even people from all over the world were laughing at him. But when he heard that sentence, I love you, it seemed like he had a support able to block all the laughter. Originally, Lu Mingfei thought he had made sufficient psychological preparations. He had simulated and fantasized about today's scene countless times in his mind. He might just nod or laugh along with everyone, but when he really saw the photos and letters, and heard the words spoken by Professor Gudrian, he suddenly realized that the Klitsch A.D. conversations of Mom and Dad Love You and I Also Love Mom and Dad that had been going on for thousands of years must be spoken out to understand their meaning. Uh, let's talk about enrollment. Uncle saw that the atmosphere was about to solidify, so he jumped out and burned himself, trying to liven up the atmosphere again. If it weren't for the complicated procedures and visa processing, I would really want to take Lu Mingfei on his journey now. Professor Gudrian said regretfully. When will you be able to enroll at the earliest? Lu Mingfei asked softly. The procedures in the college are quite complicated, and it is estimated that October will be approaching at the earliest. Okay, thank you, Professor. Seeing that Lu Mingfei had no objection, Professor Gudirian was overjoyed in his heart, and now his title as a lifetime honorary professor has been secured. Then Professor Gudirian inexplicably thought of a useless dog under his hand, his heart filled with excitement. Although I am only his temporary appointed supervisor, I have not yet been successfully awarded the title of lifetime honor professor. That guy has to bear at least half of the responsibility. No, at least two dot thirds. Lu Mingfei, based on this calculation, shortly after your enrollment, your school happened to be hosting a little event called Freedom Day. Hmm. It's similar to your school's sports festival, right? Dare to participate. No no asked provocatively. I don't care, Lu Mingfei shrugged. Not curious about what a day of freedom is like. No no furrowed his beautiful eyebrows. Didn't you mention the sports festival? I can probably guess, Lu Mingfei nodded. He could indeed guess, probably just a group of lunatics wielding heavy sniper rifles and miniature tactical nuclear bombs fighting and killing, right? Similar to a live-action version of Counter-Strike. However, in the eyes of Lu Mingfei now, its degree is indeed no different from a lively sports festival. You can guess, then don't be scared out of your wits. No no said fiercely. If anyone really has that ability, Lu Mingfei said expressionlessly. End of this chapter.